This is Stephen Codler, and you're listening to Your Superior Self. Hi, this is Rock Goddess, and I am rolling with Your Superior Self. Hi, this is Dave Meltzer, and this is Your Superior Self. Hi, I'm Anita Morjani, and this is Your Superior Self. Hi, this is Paul Selig, and this is Your Superior Self. What's up, everybody? I'm Aubrey Marcus, and this is Your Superior Self. What is up, beautiful people? Welcome back. I'm Trey Downs, and this is Your Superior Self. Thank you for taking the time to hang out with me today. Thank you for downloading this episode. If you haven't already, make sure to hit subscribe. Make sure to leave a rating and a review wherever you get your podcast from. It helps me scale this and helps me get this out to those who may, who may need it the most. And I feel like a lot of people need to hear stories like today's guest's story, Courtney Reffert. She is a, an American model and Instagram star with over 1.6 million followers. She's from Pennsylvania. Not, I'm not making fun of that. I'm just saying she's from Pennsylvania. I'm, I'm a Maryland, Delaware guy, so I'm very aware of... <laughs> Pennsylvania and its talent. I think uh, it's awesome that she's from the East Coast and she's over on the West Coast crushing it right now. And she is, she is seriously crushing it. She has um, a very well-known brand and she's doing this as a single mom, as a mompreneur, and she's on a mission. She's trying to spread positivity out there and she's out there doing great work, uh, speaking to women about um, anxiety, depression. She's out there trying to bring awareness to uh, that self-image and self-love that people um, don't often seem to have. And she's trying to be that positive influence that people can find that helps them boost their overall um, love for themselves. So Courtney's awesome. This conversation's awesome. We we go, she's very transparent. She's very vulnerable in this conversation. And just to give you a little context of the episode, here's a preview of our conversation. Recently, I've been on a more like self-discovery, like, you know, self-love spirituality where I'm open to healing all of the parts of my life that I've liked. Let's say I've tarnished or ruined or burn my bridges with but it's kind of I don't know maybe maybe you can relate to this but I've forgiven all of the crazy shit in my life I have forgiven all of the bad things all the bad people all of all of the things where I'm just like why me yeah I can uh I can definitely understand that this is going to be a great conversation. I hope you guys enjoy it. Go to TreyDowns.com. Leave me a message. Let me know what your thoughts are on anything. I love hearing from you guys. You can follow me on Instagram at TDowns80 and leave me a, leave me a message over there. Um, I also want to say thank you to Courtney for coming on the show and hanging out with us today and just tr- crushing this conversation. If you guys want to check her out, you can go to CourtneyRepper.com and uh, connect with her over there. And then also you can follow her on Instagram. Um, yeah, this is going to be amazing. So without further ado, here is my conversation with the great and powerful Courtney Ruppert. Hi, um, my name is Courtney Ruppert, and this is your superior self. Courtney, what is going on? How are you? I am fabulous. And how are you? I'm doing great. I want to say thank you for joining the show. This is a uh, pretty special Um what have you been up to? I know you're pretty busy. You're a mompreneur. Um, you got a lot of stuff going on. Um, what are you up to? Well, for one, I'm sur- trying to survive like everybody out in this world these days. Um, just kind of maneuvering our normal lives of day to day and to now kind of, you know, balancing being a teacher and then adding on all the other things the normal things that we all have to do as adults right so I'm kind of just been all about balance and kind of um, been a lot easier and kinder to myself lately Um, so I've been on this like spiritual healing of like almost self-discovery and I know it sounds a little corny but that's kind of been where I'm at like I I've been in LA for 10 some years and I finally have uh, like took like a long vacation from Los Angeles 
So I've been regrouping elsewhere and it feels amazing. So I've just kind of been, you know, resetting my goals and my intentions on my life and, you know, um, just appreciating each and every day as much as I can. So yeah, that's what I've been up to lately. <laughs> that sounds like that's pretty amazing though. Like the spirituality aspect of it. Like that, I'm all about that. Um, rumor is you're yeah. from, PA, you're from PA. I am. Whereabouts? I am, I, I am. I grew up in Leesport, Pennsylvania, pretty much all my life. So I was like 23 and then I became a Philly girl and I lived there for a couple of years. And then I ventured off to Los Angeles to where I now reside. So I love Pennsylvania. It's, it's a great place. Have you ever been there? Oh yeah. I'm a, so in Baltimore, I mean, we're, we're right. I mean, we're close to the line. I mean, I can, my, my wife went to York and, um, oh, okay. yeah, yeah, it's real close. Um, a lot, I'm from Southern Delaware, but a lot of my family are, are from, um, or live in, uh, Northern Delaware, which is like half hour from Philly. My brother went to Westchester, uh, university and I, I've always been a, a PA fan. It's just, it's a whole different world up there. It's like, um, uh, it is. You know, Which is I, funny because I'm from there, but I never, I'm always like, it's a whole different world everywhere else. You know, I'm like, <laughs> isn't this how people are? <laughs> but it's not. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I love Hershey Park. I love going up there and getting that Rudder's cho- chocolate milk. I mean, it's, it's a oh, classic yeah. up there. You know what I mean? Like LA has got to be different though. You know what I mean? Like LA's I, I, I've never been, I've been to the East West coast one time and that was for like a transfer, like a, 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 a plane transfer, a flight transfer, mm-hmm. but LA has got to be yeah. very interesting. It is. It took me a while to adjust, but then I was like, wow, I fit right in. Cause I'm one of the crazy ones that are mm-hmm. out doing their goals. And you know, it's for me, I've, considered LA my home for obviously 10 years I've been there right and Mm. the way of life is very different because you get way less for your money but you live in a great place and the the network is phenomenal for what I do right so it made sense for me to be there but now kind of what I've been doing on this my spiritual journey and my new adventure into my life my new chapter you know I've just I've been really taking a a bit back and I actually I want to get back more familiarized with my east coast roots like I want to kind of step away from west coast and the LA mentality and everything and just kind of like live a lot more low-key life so it's more intriguing to me these days you know (laughs) well it's it's interesting right like you um you went to the west coast you were trying to I guess you're pursuing a modeling career right trying yes i do still model yes Trying, <laughs> well you know what i mean you're like when you first moved out there were you i mean was it like to were you driven to to be a big model like star or was it like did you were you already in that career that field like what did that look like when you first moved over there so so i loved modeling and all of that but my first love was like beauty background Mm. so I had done that for a very long time 10 some plus years on the east coast but I also loved getting my makeup done and being in front of the camera and I had obviously you know it was very photogenic and it was kind of it wasn't modeling to me kind of just happened because I looked good and photographed really well I didn't it wasn't necessarily like my first passion and love like I was an a sport girl like I was a tomboy I grew up mostly with my dad so I was an athlete like I lived and breathed sports like I would be going to sporting events all day long with my dad over going to the mall and shop like that wasn't me so it was kind of a weird thing how modeling fell into my life but I was like if I'm going to do any type of modeling I'm going to do sports modeling so that's kind of how it started for me and then I won Philly's Hottest Blonde through WFMR one of the like most popular radio stations. So that kind of opened up the door for me. And then I became Flyers Hottest Fan and then Philly's Hottest Babe. And then it just kind of like snowballed into so much more. And then modeling just became, that's what people saw and knew me as because that's how I got the exposure and got popular because of that. So it 
like it just kind of made sense for me I was like oh well I've kind of now almost dominated this market in Philly I want to venture out and do something else but my my big dream my dream that I'm actually kind of now been doing is is I've been creating and building my own brand so while I've been on this spiritual path of like self-discovery like I'm 34 I have almost a seven-year-old I've been raising him by myself like I've been putting everybody else's like needs, even though I've been in Los Angeles pursuing my goals and dreams, I put a lot of stuff on hold. So it's been like, it's been crazy. Like, I don't know. Like I, yeah, I love modeling because it's, it's an art for me. It's kind of like acting, but that's not who I am in real life. Like I'm, I'm completely different day and night from the person that I am online to the person I am in real life and i hope people get, see both i hope i can sure. I try right, so explain, the other that. explain that so who are you online like what is, what do you mean by that like who are you online so so more than likely people are going to see all of the good things about me all the pretty pictures all of the uh, modeling photos uh, me smiling i mean happy and vibrant and yes that is me i am a happy person through and through majority but people aren't going to see the behind the scenes of my life of that. And that's mostly me being a mom or having the, you know, sitting down at a desk and having to, to do the, the not so fun stuff of my job. Right. Or, or people aren't going to see the countless hours that I put in um, on a photo shoot. They only just see a photo and they're just um, cool, cool. Like, you know, whatever, pass on to something else that might've taken me eight hours and, you know, so many days prior to, to come up with a concept or even put a look or the people that could provide and do that for me. Like there's so much, I think business side that people don't see of me where I'm like, I'm a, I handle my stuff and I also manage and um, raise a child on my own with little to no help from, you know, anyone really, I'm kind of out here solo doing my thing. So I think people don't see like the more reality, the more real life side of me. Um, plus I don't wear my hair and makeup and all that like every day. I, my hair is usually tied back. I'm in like workout clothes, really comfortable clothes, no makeup. I look either, you know, there's like a funny joke. People are always like, I either look homeless or I'm like a million dollars. I mean, there's, that's pretty much my go go-to look yeah. you know <laughs> yeah no i love the um, comfortable look i mean as parents right like i have three kids like very yeah. rare am i dressed up like if i wear jeans it's a special occasion <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah and um, you know i've been yeah it's like i've been i've been there done that with dressing up you know like the last thing I want to do is do that for myself if i'm not if i'm not getting paid for it i don't want to do it <laughs> yeah, yeah. so you know, like, and I, I think I almost have like this, people have this expectation too, that I always have to look good or always have to be happy. You know, it, it takes a lot of work to be happy in real life. Just imagine how I have to do that for my job. Like say if I'm having a really shitty day, but then I have to recite something or I have to be on camera or whatever. And, and like my dog could have died or something. And I still have to go pretend I'm like the happiest girl on camera. I mean, that takes a lot of work I mean especially on just doing that for years like in the beginning it was okay because that was this was all fresh and new to me but then you know you add a kid into that and you're just the last thing you want to do you just want to sleep you just want to rest you just mm -hmm. want to like catch up on chores you know or get get with the daily grind and, and sometimes you put things to the side and that usually has been like me and my self-care and sometimes with what I do is you you go 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 you don't know when to stop until you become overly exhausted and you just like I don't want to say you implode but you just you just need to take a break right yeah so it's so, okay like yeah that's yeah, great I think <clears throat> the spirituality aspect of it for you like is very interesting to me. Like what, what sparked that for you? Probably a breakup for me, a big, um, you know, a, a personal thing that happened um, for, 
you know, 10 years, I, like I said, I've lived in California, but I've had a, some crazy stuff happen to me. And it, a lot of stuff was public about some really not so fun things that I've endured in my, you know, journey of whatever path that I, that I have. I, you know, I hate saying the term that I'm a model. I really don't. I really don't like defining myself as that. I really kind of, I just look at myself as I'm a businesswoman. Like mm-hmm. I looked at social media 10 years ago and I was like, this is going to be a game changer for any entrepreneur, anybody who wants to be self-employed or have your own business or brand or whatever. This is the ticket to make it happen. And I took that time in my life, a big chunk of time to build my network that I have. And I use my modeling as a tool just like anybody would use money as a tool to help advance themselves. I, I took advantage of my good, you know, genes that I've got passed on um, from my parents and I've just taken care of it and maintained it. And I'm now 34 and I, I look amazing and I have people looking up to me and, you know, I gained a hundred pounds from my pregnancy with my son. So I'm kind of on this like spirituality of rediscovering who Courtney is and also loving myself all over again in all different shapes of forms. I'm not that 20 year old girl that can just bounce up and get going and start at 6 a.m. and work literally till, you know, midnight, get four hours of sleep and then do it all over again, over and over and over. I'm not that girl anymore. So I can't work or have that mentality like I can complete certain things so this spiritual like you know side of me has is I think it's really about just growing up and with COVID and you know with all this stuff going on it's really intense in the world you know and and I'm I'm a patriot I love America I love everything that we stand for here and you know I'm big on freedom and I'm big on just being you know very proud of where I'm from and I think right now I think a lot of people are on that spiritual journey of just like appreciating this this new shift in this world because it's not going to go back to normal right so Mm -hmm. it's really but it's like we're all trying at this point I think we're all trying to find our own kind of normal to get by so because it's yeah, changed my know. business, you know, and I don't know how has it affected yours. Like do you, feel oh yeah, absolutely. Like just changes that I'm explaining here, you know. Yeah, no, it, it's changed everything. It's you know, I, I think it's thrown us into this in this virtual world that a lot of people weren't ready for. Like we had danced with the notion yeah. of working home for so long, and I think a lot of yeah. boomers um, were holding on to that traditional water cooler mentality where that's how you gained momentum in a company where you know you would go and you would have the you know the water cooler chats you would go in there and you would you know get with your tribe and you know bullshit and collaborate and now that's taken away from you and and people like it cracks me up because like i've had i have this hypothesis right i have this idea of college is going to be more important than ever now right because you're we're going to be taking out we're going to be getting out of the offices we're going to be getting out of the the working environment and we're going to be working from home now how do you gain momentum in a company how do you get that upper hand on someone now right like you don't have that water cooler theory where you can go in and rub elbows with your boss check in you know um you know show them that you're there at 6 a.m and leaving the last one to leave like you don't have that anymore everybody's work we basically have a level playing field so how do you get the one up i think college is going to be uh, pretty important going forward. Um, and I think that's obviously changed, you know, been a game, game, game changer for us. And I don't know, man, I, I, I love the virtual platform though. Uh, what about you? I, I think education is probably one of the most valuable, one of the most important things anybody can have. And especially, just like you said, you know, I agree with you. I think education in general, especially even have, you know, now we're going to have to do a a lot of it is going to be online. And I struggle with self-discipline sometimes, you know, and if I don't have like a class or a classmate, sometimes I get, I become very uninspired, especially if I don't understand 
the subject or if I don't have people around where I can like bounce off ideas or I feel like, oh, I can, because, you know, you're not just going into a classroom and listening to a teacher. You're also sitting around kids. You're also unintentionally, intentionally making friends because you're sitting next to so-and-so and you're going to remember their face and names and eventually you're going to talk and you're going to make friends, right? People now are going to lose that aspect of making friends, I think, just like people can't go into the office and, you know, shoot the shit or whatever it is with their coworkers or have that type of camaraderie, right? Or even just the, the sports aspect of it. Like, I loved college when I, because I had the opportunity to continue playing sports, right? So I don't know. That's where I, I'm really upset. Not upset. I mean, of course I'm upset. I think it's really just a big bummer because you learn a lot by being part of the college isn't just the learning part. It's also the relation, the relationship mm-hmm. part that you make and build and that helps carry you throughout your life. Like I'm really good with surround with relationships. I'm really good with being competitive because I had sports at an early age and obviously, you know, education starts very young for all of us here, but you know, to whether we continue that education, that's entirely up to us. But now so many jobs are going to be, like it's going to be about how smart are you or because they're, they're going to be like, I can pay someone that is way more qualified for the same price if they know the material better than you do. Right. Mm-hmm. So you're right. It's going to become much more valuable and much more important. And I actually, I am thinking about going and getting and, and advancing more of my education, not necessarily going back to college, maybe, but maybe taking my, everything that I've done, my marketing ability that I've reached, you know, and, and upping that so I can be, make more money doing what I do. Like, I think seminars, I think those workshops, like online workshops, I think those are going to become very popular, just like online classes with college as well. Mm-hmm. So that's interesting. I don't like, know. That's interesting. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually back in school. So I'm, I'm trying to finish my undergrad in business and I have a minor in psychology and then I, uh, I want, yeah, I love psychology. I, like, I love the spiritual. I don't know. I, I like transpersonal psychology. Like that is, I don't know if you've heard of that before, but it's kind of like the, the woohoo side of psychology, the more spiritual side of things. Um, I'm, I'm definitely big into spirituality. Like I've, uh, we could talk, I could talk about this yeah. all day. Like, where are you at in your spiritual, like walk? Like, are you, are you into like higher consciousness meditation? Are you into like, what What are you into? I'm into, well, first and foremost, I'm into, you know, God almighty. I have been reconnected with God. And to me, my spirituality is like going outside and literally being near trees and or going like on a hike or just like literally reconnecting it it does it, it obviously I like going to the beach like right now I'm not near water mm-hmm. um but that if I'm in California normally that would be like the first place that I would start like my, my spirituality path would be like going to the beach like like meditating or you know just soaking in mother nature right and like recently I've been on a more like self-discovery like you know self-love spirituality where I'm open to healing all of the parts of my life that I've liked. I wouldn't say I've tarnished or ruined or burned my bridges with, but it's kind of, I don't know, maybe, maybe you can relate to this, but I've forgiven all of the crazy shit in my life. I have mm-hmm. forgiven all of the bad things, all the bad people, all of, all of the things where I'm just like, why me? Mm-hmm. I have like completely wiped that slate clean. And I'm just like, now I'm like, okay, try me, you know? And, and it's kind of like, I'm right there where I'm not gonna stick my head in the sand, like a, an ostrich who's afraid anymore. Like, no, I'm like a lioness. And I'm like, I'm ready to like, full on like attack like you know head to head with my fears or with anything that would scare me in the past it's kind of like okay I don't want to be scared anymore allow me to create the solution allow me to learn right so I've just been on this like I've been also allowing like the universe to give me signs 
you know, mm-hmm. or listening more to the direction of where I want to set the intention. Right. So like mm-hmm. I'm in my, almost in my mid thirties and I have, a, and I will, you know, I, I fell in love with someone and we kind of went our separate ways more for me on a, like I just needed to grow, grow up more. Right. I think that's the bottom line, but that love that I had for someone was able for me to open up that part where I was like, I could finally face my, I could face myself and just realize like I needed to to go through all the stuff that I've been going through. And it just so happened. It, it happened right before coronavirus and everything got shut down in California because we were one of the first people that got shut down. Right. Yeah. So I, I kind of was forced like to just literally look at my face and all the things that I was doing in my life and all the things that weren't making me happy and all the stuff. Like there's a lot of things that I'm doing in my career that like, again, I don't want to like model as much as I used to. Like I've, I've come to that point where I'm ready to just focus on my business and, and build my brands and, you know, have me pop in once in a while and do advertising, of course, and be the face of my brand, of course. But then, you know, I want to bring other people on board. I want to have it become, you know, this amazing, you know, business that I have other people that are just as passionate about my vision and my, my brand too. So I have to get to that point though, mentally before I can become real. So that's, been my spiritual like journey is just letting go of everything that I've been doing prior and allowing myself this massive transition into whether it's you know I don't know how old you were when you got married or you know or how old your kids are but I'm sure you can relate to a time before you got married before all that stuff came to fruition that you were like wow I really my life's changing and you just wake up one day and you're like what happened? <laughs> yeah, I don't you reckon. Know? I don't even recognize like that old Trey. Like I don't. I don't even. I, I can't even remember him. Like I, I. I was like I was. All right. So like my spiritual journey has taken me like in in phases and steps. Right. Like the first step was like learning that there is resistance and that I can I I can grow spiritually and and you know mentally. Right. Like that that idea of um that the idea that we can all grow, um, a, as a spiritual being and, and for the better, um, neuroplasticity, like you can, you can grow neural pathways in your brain to make you smarter. Like I always thought I was like, I'm, I'm you know, I'm the dumb guy, right. The dumb athlete, but that's not true. Like we all can, science has proven that there, you know, we can definitely grow the neural pathways in our brain to make us smarter and to learn new things. Um, mm-hmm. and then it went into this, this, idea that I was not the I that I thought I was like the the ego like I I was I I was driven so much by the ego like I thought that was me like I had to be this tough guy you know I played sports I was the athlete you know like I had to have this persona of of just being the alpha male all the time and I mean throughout my entire career it's been this alpha male like I have to be this guy like if you talk trash on me I will shut you down that kind of guy and before I got married, I mean, I, I, I led that life. I was, you know, I was living in Canton. I was, um, you know, you know, hanging out with the, with the guys and, you know, we lived in the city and we had a frat house and mm-hmm. it was a mess. And then, I, you know, we, then I got married and had kids and I don't even recognize that person anymore. Like it, it is mm-hmm. something that is totally not me, but that is everyone's journey. I think is to, to go down that path of, of experience and and learn and grow and that's the point of life right like that's Mm -hmm. like i'm glad that i'm not the same person like i'm glad that i am where i am where i am um you know you talked about god like i i believe in god i believe there is a higher power higher source and i believe that um you know he doesn't necessarily talk to us i feel like you know god's language is silence that intuition that you were talking about is like him directing Mm -hmm. us in different directions like if you feel good about something, like if you feel excited and fired up about it, like follow that, right? Like we always double, you know, second guess ourselves. Are we doing the right thing? Are we, you know, your intuition, like we're all intuitives. Like you follow that thing that makes you feel good and you keep pursuing it Mm -hmm. and you, and, and you go take one step towards that. And then God, the universe helps you and guide you along and little things start popping up that are synchronicities 
that are you can't explain them, but they're there. And it's like he's pushing you along this path. And sometimes you fall, but you got to get back up and keep going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, you're right. You're absolutely right. And I think it just it became like a breaking point for me where I was like, I can't continue to have a lifestyle that I don't want to have anymore and live it and be happy and then have and attract all the things that I want in my life or back in my life. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm, I'm not a hard on myself as much as I used to be. Like I have come a long way, but I also know like it had to me, I truly believe I had to, this had to happen. Like I, in order for me to evolve and grow, because I've had a lot of traumatic things happen in my life and my career which then also can help rewire your brain. And then, you know, I suffered a lot with anxiety and post-traumatic stress disorder. And a lot of things would trigger, you know, um, me and my emotions and stuff. So it was like, when you, when I opened myself up to like love and like actually fell in love for the first time, it was kind of like, it was really crazy because it brought everything up that I suppressed over the years to the surface. And it was just kind of like, I'm not well, like I really need to just really focus on myself because I was like, I want nothing more than ever to share my life with someone. But then I was so closed off on that, uh, that possibility of, wow, my life, I can't do all the things that I still want to do. Right. Like it was kind of like, I was the one that wasn't ready, but I was right. Yeah. So this spiritual journey has really just been on like, just allowing me again to just let go of all of my past that was working to keep me in survival mode or just to, you know, I'm out here doing my thing, surviving and raising a child solo. Being a single parent isn't really the easiest thing in the world these days, you know? So, you know, adding all that to, to my stress just really kind of put all of my strain of being a woman and who I was on hold and that really affected my happiness and that is the most important thing for anybody to have is their their happiness so that's kind of what I've been doing is just kind of reconnecting and getting back to being happy and not allowing outside people to have any type of tie or you know determination of my happiness it has that's an inside job right so yeah. it's just kind of like that's kind of where I'm at. And I hope, you know, I come out of this and it brings me back to exactly, you know, what's meant to be, which I truly do feel is meant to be what will. And, you know, that's the other thing is we don't know what's going to happen next, you know? And I think that's really terrifying for a lot of Americans, for a lot of the world, you know, we don't, we're usually, we know what we have something, we have a contest, we have, you know green light red light yellow light we usually have you know a good scenario of everything but there's so many different variables in the play right now that it's very overwhelming I think with anybody who is usually happy for the most part or has a good grip on their life you know I think it's I think yeah. everybody has been doing something something to some degree of some spiritual whatever right now hopefully <laughs> anyway <laughs> yeah no, i think there's a i think there, i mean you're on to something i think there's a big spiritual awakening right now i think it is uh it's interesting that you say that because like i've been reading a lot of spiritual texts you know a lot of books and uh one of my favorite authors who i think you would really enjoy is uh paul selig um he I've introduced him yeah he introduced me to aubrey marcus and um he is he is a channeler who is just, he is just so good. And I've read it. I just read, I just read his book, Alchemy and he, his philosophy, not his philosophy, but his, his channeled text. Like I have it underlined like a thousand times. It's like for those who are wanting to find it, it's actually like page like 93 or 94 in his book, but he talks about the second coming of Christ. He's like, you know, the second coming of Christ is not, the physical coming of Christ. Like he's not going to be coming back to this, this plane in a physical, um, I, I guess, manifest more. So the second coming of Christ is the awareness of man and woman, like saw, like having that Christ, like imagine Christ coming out of the, of the, um, of the temple, right. Like coming out of that, that rock rolling away from, 
from the temple well that is actually your heart right like the heart like the 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 rock rolls away and the christ comes out and we finally learn how to love and we finally mm. learn how to accept everyone as who they are and love them for what they are no matter what because that is what this that's that is what christ is it, it is all love mm -hmm. all that you know what i mean like so i thought that was very interesting in that like i see a lot of people becoming more spiritual and maybe we are going more towards that maybe we are going to that more of awakening of love right because because there's so much hate right like there's just so much hate mm -hmm. and divide in the country and in the world that i think a lot of that has to come to surface for the love to like you know the light has to shine on the darkness to make it bright and i think that's what's happening right now i think the light of god you know that love that universe universal being is like you know the all that shit has to come up and then then we can see it for what it is you know we can see how fucked up america is um you know we we thought we were we were good you know we were blind to it and then you know we had this president that came in and shook us to the core and you know a lot of things came up a lot of bad shit and so now we're dealing with it we got to deal we have to deal with it to get over it and i think that um you know the more that we try to you know the light hits it and we see it and we you know it is what it is we just have to deal with it and and be um accountable for it then the love comes after that and i think forgiveness so um yeah. I, think you're, I think you're right on with that i think there is a spiritual awakening i think so i think that there's what's done in darkness always comes to light right isn't that what they're the saying yeah, is and i just yeah. do hope that they're, that's true and i think that's kind of what it is i think a lot of people have seen it seen the truth know the truth but they have turned their eye the other way or the cheek or they've just buried their head just like things are like oh i'll deal with it later or oh it's someone else's problem but really the only way the world is going to change is if we change the only way we change is if you and i change right so it's like it all boils down to us that's why you know educating yourself and becoming a well-rounded person and knowing how to be a good person is key right because this world you can live but sometimes you're not a good person and you could really affect major majorly around you know your environment just like you know that's why there's law and order right or you know there's police that help with you know crimes and all that stuff if there's a bad apple in that mix it can affect good people regardless if you're a good person or not so it takes like it just it obviously it takes a little luck too i think in this world to be in the right place at the right time but ultimately it takes like you believing in yourself and you doing your work inside internally and that all starts with okay are you a happy person right because that's just if you're not a happy person, you're more than likely not going to do good things. So that's how, kind of how I look at it. And mm -hmm. I don't know. I feel like a lot of that is surfacing now. A lot of that is being exposed. A lot of that is kind of coming to light. And I think it's hard for people to swallow. And that's where the work comes in is facing it, right? And seeing those demons or, you know, seeing the bad things or, seeing all the stuff that is just really shitty in this life because I grew up in a small town and you said it earlier you're just like it's Pennsylvania is not like the rest of the world and you're right because I grew up kind of like living in this bubble uh that my dad created you know growing up in a very small town I was very sheltered I you know I didn't really get to experience life the way a lot of people did and it started dating you know so it was way later and it was just really different i was very sheltered and then it kind of like i got exposed to the world and i was like wow i want more of it but then i also got exposed to the bad of the world and it really made me almost like hate myself it made me like not like myself and that had nothing you know you think that someone like me i would like oh people tell me oh you must be full of yourself or oh you love yourself and like see that's that makes me not like myself because people almost make me feel shame for looking the way I look or being the way that I am. And that's what really bothered me and held me back in creating my, my other brands and businesses that had nothing to do with my looks because I always felt like I had to fucking prove things to people. Sorry. I don't know if I can swear yeah, or not, no, but you, I didn't mean, swear. I'm a passionate speaker, <clears throat> no, but, <I> love it. <clears throat> but yeah. So to me, ultimately it was like, I was in this vicious, cycle of like trying to be a people pleaser right and that ultimately made me so unhappy that I was like 
when I fell in love with someone, I was, I rebelled. It was almost like, no, I become this happy. Well, now I need, I need to go off and do what I need to do. Not realizing that my heart, you know, I, I've, it, it was like the timing of everything was like, I had to crack in order for me to realize. So I hope that that can happen with the world. I hope that we all can awaken, but we also know that there's a lot of shady shit that's been going on. And that's also like the part where it makes me almost want to appreciate every single day. Right. So that's where I'm at right now. (laughs) (laughs) I know. Right. Like, I don't know. Like, uh... I think it was like, I saw something on Rogan or something. So there was a quote and uh, it was like, um, you know, there must be something wrong with that guy over there because he's sitting by a waterfall, just watching nature happy as I don't know what. And, and, and everybody's mad at him because he's not looking at a phone and he's not watching the news or some shit like that. I don't know. Like, I just feel like, you know, we do it to ourselves just with the, how we're connected uh, with, with you know uh, i don't know like social media how connected we can get sometimes and and the news uh, the massive news outlet that there is and i i personally and to be honest with you like i mean i i kind i follow you know i get my news mostly from twitter like i don't really try i mean i have my sources but i don't really watch a lot of news outlets um i i tried really i mean i really i shouldn't even say try i i do not watch anything (laughs) else i try not to get involved too much with politics like i have my i have my beliefs but i for the most part i i really just you know i really block a lot of that shit out like i I focus on me like you were talking about like the self-love like i gotta get up meditate i gotta exercise i gotta work out i gotta feel good i gotta i gotta get the chemicals pumping in my body that make me feel great that can make me be my best version of myself so i can tackle the day and and be productive for the you know set myself up for success and you know what and then to live in the moment really right and to live and be in and remember to be in the moment like we get so like the ego just like steals a moment for us. Like in every spiritual text that I read, it, there's two things that makes a point to say, like everything from Buddhism to Christianity to whatever Hinduism. Um, they always say that you have to go inwards, right. To find that, that, that beingness, that, that greater power that we are like you have to, instead of going externally and trying to find things external, externally, it, you have to go inside. And then two, um, you have to really pay attention to, how do I want to word this? I don't want to fuck this up right now. Um, you don't have to necessarily like be plugged into everything else, right? Like you have to be in the moment, like in, in, in the moment is eternity. And that's what they say. Like, the moment the ego steals a moment from us but because it forces us to think about the future what we have to do in the past of right. what, how we fucked up right like it says all the time like why did you do that like and we think about that all fucking day like you get up in the morning you check your emails you, you see one bad email it ruins your day for the rest of the day you're thinking about that the moment is where eternity is like that is where if you can stay in the moment that is where eternity is but we can never stay in the moment like we can never really be in the moment because of everything else that's going on on outside and that's why meditation has helped me self-care self-love to be in that moment more and just like it feels like eternity like it does like i can meditate for an hour now i mean it took me a long time i had to start out 10 minutes 15 minutes but now i can do it for an hour and it feels like 10 minutes because i'm in that moment and i'm like just in it and that is where like you find that true source of spirit that true source of self and i didn't mean to go on a rant but i didn't want to fuck that up you know what i mean like i didn't want to no, because I, I i understand exactly what you're saying like i'm i'm going through it <laughs> it's just weird i don't know maybe this was meant to be because you know i normally am not like on this uh openness to just be open you know i'm usually just very like okay a podcast know what to say know how to talk you know all this stuff and i but for some reason i was like you know what no i'm gonna be completely 100 authentic authentic and real and be truthful like not 
maybe not everybody that you have on your podcast does exactly what I'm saying, but this is truly like what I am going through. And I hope that if anyone is listening and they're going through something, like they can be like nodding their head and be like, yeah, I totally get it. Just like the things that you say, like I'm nodding. I know you can't see it, but I'm nodding my head. I'm like, yeah, you're right. Cause there's just, and especially you, you're in school, which I had no idea that, you know, you were studying, you know, psychology, which is like literally everything that I'm kind of talking about going through too. And it, it's so much of a broad range of so many different things, but then it all kind of comes down to that, you know, and really it's kind of like, what, defi- what, what are we as humans? Who are we, you know, like it doesn't, that to me is what boggles my mind. And I don't know, maybe as time goes on, we'll find more answers to, to that because my mind has been completely like mind blown with so many information, so many new things that I've learned about this life and world, myself and others in the past 20, you know, this year, 2020, 2020 has just been crazy. <laughs> 2020 so, has been a fucking dickhead, but it's been, it's been great. I mean, I uh, 21, 21 is better. You know, <laughs> I hope it's not like the it can evil only child. It, it's, it can only go up from here. Let me just tell you, it can only go up from Oh boy. <laughs> um tomorrow is Friday the thirteenth. We don't want to speak too soon. I know, right? <laughs> Isn't that crazy? <laughs> Speaking of spirituality, we're all like, Ooh, spiritual, <laughs> Friday the 13th. You know, and then it was eleven eleven a couple of days ago. I was all on my my praying and meditation path and mm-hmm. you know, doing all those silly things, <laughs> as people would say. <laughs> Yeah, I just don't even care anymore. Like people, um, you know, I've had a lot of spiritual guides on here. I've had, you know, shamans. I've had, I don't know, I've had a face reader. I've had channelers, psychics. Like, I just, I love that. Like, it's all connected, really. I mean, I am, I believe in God for sure. Like, there is there is God. I believe, you know, Jesus, Buddha, and all the, the great mystics have walked this earth. I just think that their teachings may have been, I don't know, like not intended the way they, that it is written in a, in a ancient text. I think, uh, and, and, and if you don't believe that, that's fine. That's great. Like, the, that's just my opinion. I think um, I personally believe in reincarnation. I think that we, we keep coming back, you know, not, maybe not necessarily by some religious laws, but I think that we come back for our higher being, our higher source, our to come back and, and learn more lessons about why we're here, like how to expand ourselves as consciousness. You know, I think we're all connected to that God, that God source. And I mean, there's, you know, just, there is, there's so much scientific evidence out. Like there is a scientific theory about near death experiences. Uh, Dr. Raymond Moody has a, as a theory out of the university of Virginia about near death experiences. And so it started for me with near death experiences, like reading their books. And a a lot of the books are not the same stories. However, they have the same type of like store, like they don't have the same exact like replica, like, um, same story, like the same person didn't have the same experience, but the same kind of like feeling keeps coming out of that love, like this, like this everlasting love. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, you know, they didn't want to come back. Like they had this option as well. Like they, you know, for some, they were able to come back and some of them didn't, but anyway, um, that was, you know, you read 30 of those books and you start wondering like, what the hell, man, like there's, there's, there is a, a repeating, you know, theme here. And so you start reading other stuff and it just makes sense to me. Like I read, um, Dr. Eben Alexander, who, who had meningitis and he basically he's a neuro was he a neurosurgeon and he actually was in a coma and he actually it, he, it's so crazy because he can actually go back and read his brain scans but i had him on the show and his book proof of heaven is beautiful he talks about going to the other side and he was actually in a coma for a week and he talks about going to the other side and, and, and it, it, his story is crazy. Like you have to read it. It is crazy. I'm not going to spoil it for you, but he comes back and he describes all this stuff and he looks at his brain scans and he's like, I should not be alive. Like this, this right here is a brain scan of someone who was not 
by its medicine's definition alive or has has a thought, but I'm here today and I'm growing stronger and stronger and stronger. And it's just like, you know, there is something out there, you know, and he is, he used to be like that scientific guy, like that guy that was like, you know, very, uh, by the book, you know, hypothesis theories and things like that. And probably believed a little less about God back then, but now he's like, you know, fully committed to like, you know, spirituality and he goes around, he talks about this stuff and it's pretty powerful. I mean, I didn't mean, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to go on a rant, but uh, you're probably like, what the hell is going on right now? But um, no, I love <laughs> I very fascinating because it's just like, I do like, I'm a big space nerd. Like I'm totally into like uh, all watching all those kind of documentaries and even like ancient aliens and just even kind of like Egyptians and Romans and like all that history. Right. The, the, the people before us, and it kind of it goes back down to like the biblical years of just the creation of just the, the start of like the curiosity of the human race. I mean, I feel like from the beginning, from the get go, that's just kind of in our nature. We're always going to be because we're always searching for evolution and just evolving as a species, not just with humans. But that to me is what is so fascinating. And it all kind of comes down like that's where I, I'm like, I'm always asking why, you know, like there's so many things that I, there's answers that are out there, but it's up to us to kind of like figure it out and search for it. But I love hearing stuff like that because you've done the research, you've looked into that. Like there is this little boy I remember watching or seeing and it was something like he died and he like, I talked to God and like, he came back and then he was like, yeah, mom, I met grandpa and he told me something and she was like, he would have not known this only my grandma only my dad would have known you know like a, a secret nickname that they had like there was I don't know if you remember the what I'm referring to but it was just it was a crazy story and then they had did like another document our documentary on like other people that going through like the same thing and it was always like I talked to God or I saw this light or I went down Oh, like something it was always the same story like you were saying and then I've watched this other thing where this guy literally was in a plane crash knew he was dying completely blacked out but this is when you know he had went into a coma and remembered he was like floating in space or like a time warp and literally went to this whole other place it was very like dream like that he very explained it but he was like he was able to see his soulmate he was able to see people and like his family members and like other and he was like and no one talked you you all just telepathically communicated right and it was like the most gorgeous uh gardens and you could actually like taste the colors and it was just the most bizarre craziest thing but you almost like I believe it I believe it you know and other people have like you know as you were saying like in these different stories and stuff it's like people all have some type of similarity into that I don't know and and, or for them they would always say I didn't want to come back it was so Mm -hmm. it felt so good it felt so amazing I didn't want to come back I will always remember that and like all that I don't know I just find all that stuff so fascinating like I can never get enough like I, I'm always online looking for like the newest <laughs> cool documentary to watch on like space or like evolution have you seen like how babies are formed like the actual creation of human life in a woman like that to me no me no up. I gotta see that like that's that's it amazing. literally shows like the the um the race with the sperm right and so mm-hmm. it shows like into going into the egg and then like it's crazy like the woman the egg actually chooses the sperm like it's not up to the sperm it's not mm-hmm. the first one wins it's the first one who can actually crack the actual outer shell and only that sperm is able to go in because that's the egg that that egg chose that sperm it's gnarly like yeah i if, because I was that at one point, right? So yeah. I started learning all this stuff when I got pregnant. And I would watch this 
these documentaries and I would literally like cry. And I don't know <laughs> if it was my hormones or not, but probably, but still I would watch it and I'd be like, this is so beautiful. This is so intelligent. There's so much more to our life and our story and our spirituality. That's why like all this stuff that's happening, it's almost like, did this already happen? Is this reincarnation of the past life that we're repeating? Like, or are we living on like different dimensional earth? Like, I don't know. Like I could go literally all night long talking about this stuff. It just, it freaks me out. So that's kind of like the spirituality path too. It's just, it's almost like soaking my brain with as much information as I can about things that have nothing to do with education other than the evolution of who we are as sure. humans. You should read that it'll help me <clears throat> find myself. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. You'll find something. Um, I think I'm finding, I'm finally finding myself too, you know, cause like there, there's a couple things I want to say about what you just said, but you know, um, it, all right, let me just say that now and I'll say this. So think about you being here, this, this version of you, like this person, this consciousness, like you think about the lottery, right? Like your parents had to meet, like your great grand, your grandparents had to meet your great grandparents had to meet for you to be here. You're talking about a lottery, like you, you're here. Mm -hmm. And then people are like, you know, I don't believe in reincarnation. We don't keep coming back. Well, you're fucking here right now. Like how you're on a spinning ball, you know, we're, we're going around the sun, a burning star. Like, I mean, we're here. Like how absurd is it that we live multiple lives when we're living one right now in the time that we're in like you and i are having a conversation you're on the west coast or so i'm on the east coast like our you know and i and i read books like sapiens i mean we talk it talks about the the cognitive re revolution the industrial revolution the agricultural revolution like i mean you can't tell me that we haven't lived another life like just look reading all that stuff like i mean it just you know i don't know if whatever feels right to you you know is, is what you should probably pursue and, and for me mm -hmm. these books these these this literature feels right to me it makes you know it makes sense to me and you know um and and, and for the longest time like i just you know i would always you know growing up right? Like growing up and, you know, I'm born in 83. So I'm, I'm three years older than you. I grew up in a time where I didn't know who I was. Like, I just, I would always, you know, <laughs> it's so funny because the more that I learn about our, our genealogy and the chem the chemistry reactions that happen in our body and the, you know, genetics and stuff like that. Like we as a species always flock to the herd, right? Like that herd mentality, that's where the safety is survival. And like growing up in high school and stuff, like that's how it was, right? Like, I mean, I was an athlete, but I always flocked to a, a certain type of people, type of a certain group of people. And I lost my identity because like, you know, as a human, like growing up in that stressful situation, high school, like uh, the survival, I needed to be like a lot of people, like the athletes, you know, if I wanted to be my version of myself, that, that could mean, you know, that I wouldn't survive high school, you know? And then as I get older, it just repeated itself. Like I wanted to be liked by my peers. I wanted to be liked by my friends and, and, and people out in the community. And so like, I would, you know, I wasn't really who I am and I was, a, you know, I didn't know what that looked like, but now that I'm finally mid thirties, you know, I'm finding out more about what I, what Trey likes and what I dislike and what I truly am enjoying in life. And, you know, family mm -hmm. is number one, but then, you know, there's other stuff too that I didn't realize before. Like I always knew that family was great and I love family, but then like spirituality aspect of it, right? Like, and then psychology, like I'd never really pictured myself to be a psychology fan, like a, a psycho not, like I just never really thought of myself to be that, like, but I can't get enough of it. And, and you, I feel like you're on that beginning path. Like, I feel like you're on this verge of like finding out who you truly are. Yeah. I do feel like that. I mean, I know, I know who I am, but at the same time, like there's so I've, I've, you know, the best thing that I could possibly say that has happened to me within this past year is I've been so humbled that it's like, you know, I'm, so grateful for being a mom for me you know what I'd rather have I'd rather, I wouldn't trade my situation for for anything right because it's built such a great relationship that I have with my son and the I get double love you know and my son gets all my love <laughs> and and to me it's like 
I could be shitty about or feel shitty about certain things. But I look at it like now I'm like, I'm, I just have more, I just am so much more grateful for the little, the little things. And I've always been, but I've just now I'm not, I don't get so worked up anymore. I used to have a very short fuse of like, um, you know, patience where I'm like, if, if I'm on a time, you know, I, I got to crunch in all this stuff in my life. I don't got time for mishaps or lateness or whatever it is that, mm-hmm. you know, normal happen in people's lives well then you add in a kid and you can't really you can time things but good luck (laughs) you know Uh, you can be on schedule but good luck there's always going to be oh I can't find a sock or you know oh I don't want to go or crying or just whatever there's just always something that'll hold you up and it kind of can that can really set your day off wrong so I think that's also where moms and all that and all the even dads who raise their kids we don't when people are like, oh, it's the hardest job in the world. I think that's where the hard part is, is learning this to flip your brain to like not be so hard on yourself for the, the adult things that need to get done because society, they don't, we don't get breaks. Like, oh, you know, if we're late for work, we, as the person, we get penalized for that. You know, we don't, whether we don't get paid or we get documented or whatever it is. Like, that's why I love what I do I'm grateful for my job. I'm grateful that I have the opportunity to be able to work from home where that this situation didn't really affect me, but it affected my whole life because now I'm teaching my son from home. Right. So Mm. I've been, now I'm like, I flipped it instead of me being like, Oh God, my son's school's in the way. Now I'm like, wow, I get to bond with my son in school. You know, like now I get to see my son grow and evolve and I have seen that. So it's like, 2020 has completely changed my life and at first I was like what the f like I feel like everybody has felt that way but also it's kind of like I don't want my son to go back to regular normal school if you know things aren't going to be normal and they're not right so it's just kind of like I've accepted now the, the new way and I feel like it's allowed me to just be calmer and to just focus on that self-love where I'm not getting myself worked up because then I then ultimately what happens is if I get upset then I feel bad later and then I beat myself up for it and then I think it's like a vicious cycle of not being kind to yourself which then ultimately makes you less kind to other people which you never get out of that circle of like crud of feeling that way right so that's I don't know that's really too of just like this whole scenario of what is going on right now is just, I want to smile at people. I want, I'm smiling at people under my mask, but I'm like, Oh, people can't see me, (laughs) you know? So no, this has been an amazing conversation. I appreciate you like being, you know, vulnerable or willing to be vulnerable and being authentic. Like I think that uh, people, you know, especially with your brand, um, I think that, I can appreciate it. I think your fans will too. I think, um, you know, this has been a great, fantastic conversation. How can people connect with you further? Well, obviously, you know, you guys have any social media, like, um, you know, the major accounts on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, it's all, it's just my name. It's it's at Courtney Ruppert. So that's good. And then I'm verified on all of them. So I know that there's a lot of fake accounts up there of me where people can get confused. Um, so all my stuff is verified under my name um, at Courtney Ruppert with the K, of course. <laughs> that's awesome. What do you want your legacy to be? I want my legacy to be, you know, maybe one day bigger than Marilyn Monroe's, <laughs> who knows, <laughs> but I feel like, you know, the new way of becoming something or having a voice or, you know, is really all kind of through the tools that I've used to grow my, my brand. So I think if anything, I would like to go down in history of like being you know, one of the first, you know, creators of, you know, the internet of, you know, making a name for themselves and branding themselves to fulfill their dreams, whether it is, 
being the most famous person on the world or just having a successful brand and living and breathing and doing and fulfilling that. I want my son to be proud of me, of course, and I have my own nonprofit that I've been working on. Um, it's taken a lot longer for me to, to take off, but that's something that I'm truly passionate about. And I look at it like that's something that I want to kind of, that's really where I want my legacy to be is through my nonprofit and, you know, changing other people's lives through the adversity and through the setbacks and the hard times that I went through, you know, and I, I bring up Marilyn Monroe because I almost, I feel a little bit um, relatable to her because, um, you know, she grew up kind of living solo and doing her own thing and not really knowing who she was and, and finding love in other people and not really finding it within herself and she became so obsessed with her craft that she lost herself and and through all that and I think it led her down through some making some choices that didn't really obviously pan out too well and so if I can take what she's done in her life and then use it to the strengths that I have in mind you know I'm not I don't dreamed of being an actress but I would love to be real and have millions of people see that right I'd love to help millions of women through going through what I went through but but then selling them stuff that they can afford that they love that they like in me you know oh, so many people that follow me that aren't men who find me attractive there are other people who are like oh what are you wearing what are you you know um putting on your skin what do you what's your routine like there's so many people that want to know what I'm up to that if I can leave anything behind I hope that through people's curiosity of me I can be a positive impact in other people and and then their happiness and I hope that my son can can just live and do that with other people in his life my I guess to put it all in a nutshell too is Aside from the legacy of my career, on a personal note, I hope that uh, my son is, a, is a, good, a good boy and a good, successful child uh, who grows up to be a successful adult and makes the world better. Mm, I beautiful. Think, I, think if, I think any parent, when you ask them about a legacy, you know, that's usually your kids, too. So that's all we can do as humans is hope we raise better humans. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Courtney, thank you so much for joining the show. This has been fantastic. Thank you for having me. I'm so glad that you're so great to talk to and you're a great host. So thank you again for allowing me to be my myself. <laughs> <laughs>